my name is Keris, you may know me as Let's Make It Orky, and I am finally back with another video. I'm going to be talking about some Warhammer Fantasy and painting a little Skaven for you. So for today's video, I'm going to be painting the Rat Ogre and the Clan Rat from the Island of Blood box set. I managed to trade this set recently and I've been really excited about the Skaven. We're going to be starting today's video with Wildwood. Wildwood is going to be used on all of the wood. Very surprising, I know. Now there is no wood on the Rat Ogre, so we will be using the paint to begin with, just on the shield. We're going to do the internal and external in this colour before moving on to the next one. I'm going to be doing this entire scheme pretty much with just contrast paints and with a few normal ones at the end. The next colour is Snakebite Leather. We're going to be using Snakebite Leather on all of the cloth. Very early on, I realised I wanted some really vibrant pops of green. However, I felt like having the entire robes green would maybe be a little bit too much. So I wanted to mute down the colour scheme a little bit and make it a little more realistic, I guess. As realistic as fantasy can be. I decided that the lower half of all of the cloth would be snake bite leather, focusing the green on the hood alone. So for the rat ogre, as there is almost like bandages wrapped around some of the areas, I will be doing these snake bite leather and focusing the green on the cloth around his waist. I got inspired to do this project due to watching a YouTube channel called Nurgling. I'll pop it on the screen now. It is a phenomenal channel that has some very simple aspects about it. It's about enjoying the hobby for you. And one of the series is that they have been producing is rereading some of the old White Dwarf episodes on Stillmania. Stillmania is something I had never heard about before, but something that really inspired me, not only in this project, but in how I understood the hobby going forward. The stories of Stillmania are about friends coming together, finishing projects, and the project being a story of its own. There's a point in one of the videos where they're talking about the banner bearers of each squad and how a banner bearer is potentially one of the most important aspects of it. This uniqueness to each and every model has been amazing for my vampire counts army. I have spent hours on each model making each zombie unique at different stages of being on earth and trying to add as much character as possible even though they are just simple zombies. We're going to move on to Rattling Grime next and this will be for all of the fur. We will be covering the rat from head to toe in this colour. Now, I will be avoiding the ears and the tail as I want to make these a little bit more fleshy. I have been using contrast paint for one predominant reason, speed. After being so inspired by the Stillmania episodes, I wanted to finish some projects. I am notorious for having ideas and some of them being very good, but never really finishing them to completion. So for this, I wanted the Skaven out of the Island of Blood box done and ready for games relatively quickly. I know there's a lot of people that don't like contrast paints, but I think with a little bit of time and effort, they can be elevated to a degree that makes them brilliant for the tabletop. Okay, okay, so, the intention was there. I'll be honest, I have played a game with these, and they weren't finished. I had one squad of 20 finished, and I had my Rat Ogre squad finished. I am still waiting to finish my two HQs and another 20 clan rats, but I will say this much, 
There was 23 models of one army, one colour scheme is the most consistent painting I've done in a long, long time. I am not an army painter and I am very proud to say that. I enjoy spending hours, days, weeks on a single model and pouring my heart and soul into it. Now I am Nero Spicy and I get bored of projects very quickly. So you can imagine how many loved but unfinished models are sat in my very useful boxes. This army has been on my shelf little longer than a month and I have managed to finish half of it already. So before we go any further we are going to do Gilliman's Flesh on all of the fleshy bits. I absolutely adore this contrast paint. I think it is perfect um, for a lot of things and in particular generic faces. I think it's a really universal colour that I actually use for washes on my golds as well. I won't be using it like that on this project in particular but give it a go next time you are not quite sure what colour you want to add to your gold. After this, we are going to be moving on to our green. This is going to really tie the whole project together. And I did struggle to pick my green, but in the end, we ended up with, oh my God, I'm gonna butcher this. Karen Jandra, oh no. You can see it, you know what that is. We're gonna be putting this all over those hoods, as well as anything else we want to pop with this fluorescent green color. Now, while we put this colour down, I want to give two shout outs to my two opponents that I've managed to play Warhammer Fantasy Battles against. We are playing 8th edition and I got to play against Tom from Schoolboy Studios. Go check out his Instagram, he is a full-time commission painter and a phenomenal kit basher. And the other opponent was my wonderful partner, Sam Cellini. He is a tabletop RPG writer. You may know him from his work from Orbital Blues or Sins. He predominantly is on Twitter. If you like to tweet, go drop him a follow. Now that the green is done, we are gonna move on to the metal. I have issues sometimes with GW's metals. But Metal and Alchemy from Scale 75 has not let me down yet. For this project, I'm using Necro Gold. It has a tinge of green within its shine, and I feel like this complements the other elements of green within my clan. Now this does take me a while, so while past me is painting on those metallics, let me tell you about the games we played. To begin with, me and Tom went against each other for a 250 point battle. One on one, my Skaven versed his Beastmen, and I won. Very fast. Extraordinarily fast. I charged with 20 clan rats with spears into his beastmen and they lost by I think two and then that was it they ran away and I charged over them and killed them leaving him with one squad left which I targeted down extraordinarily fast. I'm sorry Tom if you're watching this, Skaven rule. Sam and Tom then got to have another game uh, which was 250 points. It was a little bit of a longer game and just as the dice did not favour either player at this point. Clearly the dice gods were favouring me today because we then played a three player battle. Now there is nowhere in the rules that give you examples on how to do this. So we just had some fun, made up a few rules ourselves and set up the board where we each took a third. Now to begin with, it looked like Sam was going to get annihilated. Me and Tom definitely targeted his empire a little bit too much. Now we had some big cannons sat at the back and we were worried about those. Even though it was 750 points, it still felt like there were so many models on the board. And each model was impactful, which is something I often don't feel with 40k. I feel like something was missing on this paint scheme and decided that I wanted the belts to be in Black Templar. 
and um, that was mainly to break up some of the areas and there looked like there was almost armor but not quite metallic armor it was i wasn't quite sure what this was so i decided to do it in black templar relatively simple it doesn't add too much but it also doesn't take away too much I also then used that Black Templar on a lot of the wiring for the Rat Ogre that I thought green would maybe pop a little bit too much. After all, I do like the cartoon look, but I also was really inspired by a lot of the artwork within the Codex, and I didn't want it to look too gimmicky. I'll be honest, I didn't want it to look too gimmicky. I kind of wish I'd put a little bit more green on, but we live and learn as I progress through this project. Things may change up over time. Now, this is a really honest point of the video. I missed quite a few areas. So this sped up part is me going backwards and forwards between contrast paints, between the metallic, everything that we've done already, and just tidying it up. It happens, it's normal, and it's okay. Here we are going to do some Agrax Earthshade. Is a project truly finished until it's got some Agrax on it? I don't think so. I mainly use this on the metallics just to deepen it a little bit, but I also like to pin wash areas that I may have missed, even in that second go around, or if areas I feel like need to be a little bit darker. At the end of the day, the underbelly of the rat is going to be darker with all of the shadows that are being cast on it. So I just go through each and every bit of the model and just add a little bit more depth to it. You can see I'm popping it on parts of the arms and using water my fingers to dab off too much excess. Adding a little bit of definition around the arms for the muscles, but predominantly I would say sticking to that metallic. You could probably notice there's quite a few white spots here. I'm undecided on what I want to do with them. This is the first time I had painted a rat ogre and I wasn't quite sure what colour I wanted to do the blade, whether I wanted to introduce a, another metallic colour or whether I wanted to do it gold. In the end, it did end up gold and that wire on the top ended up green. So we're not far from the end now. We are on that last couple of stages. And at this point, we're gonna take it from contrast and we're gonna add some additional highlights. So we're gonna be using corn red, moot green, talad, talan. You can see the color, you know which color I'm talking about. And Bugman's glow. We're gonna be using these colors to add some additional highlights. Now I'll be honest, these colours aren't specifically highlights. Some of these colours aren't lighter than the contrast paints we've previously chosen. Bugman's Glow is actually a deeper colour than the contrast it will be used on. So for Bugman's Glow, we're going to be adding some texture. The texture is going to be added to Gilliman's flesh and we're going to add a little nose on the rats too. We're going to be stippling just an ever so slight amount of this colour onto the ears and adding little fine lines just to the edge of the tails. Now this is sped up, however I did not spend a long time doing this. This can be rough, this can be a little bit janky, it's just about adding a little bit extra to draw the eye around the model. We're going to use the sand colour to block in some of the highlights on the fabric. In particular, on the ropes, you can use it on the raised areas just to add a little bit more depth. The moot green is going to be used in a similar way within the crystals and the fabrics. Just going around the model and adding a little bit of extra colour where you feel like it's needed. The red, very carefully placed in the eyes just to add those beady little eyes in the dark. And that's it. That's the paint scheme done. Using contrast paints and then adding a little bit of texture and highlight with normal acrylic paints, I think creates a really cool effect. 
Now I will be basing my models. I'm basing my models with sterling mud. I will then be adding some flowers from Gamer's Grass, but it is completely your choice. However you decide you would like your Skaven, if you do decide to copy this method. Now I can hear you screaming and shouting. I told you a story about a game that I played and I never told you the outcome. That three-way 750 point game never really came to an outcome. We all took losses, we all had a lot of fun and at the end of it we all looked around the table, shook each other's hands and said that we had a great game. We kind of came to the conclusion Sam probably won, but we realised it was very hard to add up points when there's three of you and that the point system doesn't really work. <laughs> but Sam had the most models standing at the end and had definitely done his fair share of casualties. The main thing was that we all had fun. We walked away from that session with smiles on our faces and enjoyed it so much. Past me is letting you know right now that I did forget to add Screaming Skull to the teeth just so they had some little gnashes to be biting their opponents with. And here they are in all their glory with a beautiful movement tray to match. Movement trays are one of my favourite things about Warhammer Fantasy Battles so getting some new ones in the post ready for this video was a dream. I hope you've enjoyed this type of video. A massive thank you to everybody that has been supporting me on Patreon since my return to the internet after a bit of a hiatus. It has been inspiring to be able to get back to painting and bringing content to you guys. If you would like to see more, my Patreon will be linked down below where we have hobby hangouts each week or you can catch me on Twitch every Tuesday at 6pm. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a glorious week. Thank you again and goodbye.